Today, my guest is Amy Buschatz. How are you today, Amy? Thank you so much oh. for being here. Oh, I'm so good. Thank you for having me. Also, Amy, I just love talking to people who have my name. It is so much easier. I don't know. <laughs> and we were talking about holding up the brand, which is really cool. I love that. There's just like a wild number of people named Amy. I don't know what was going on with our parents. And I'll tell you, my mother told me that she named me Amy because she was trying to think of a name that nobody else had. And I really think she missed the mark on that because I know a lot of Amy's, like a lot. So, so they just picked out a, a name that they thought was uncommon? I Apparently. Not very good job of it, though, huh? So, <laughs> but what do you do? Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, there really are. I don't know that many. That's not true. I know a lot of Amy's now, but I, I think I feel like there was only one other Amy in my school that I was aware of. And she spelled her name funny, but yeah. um, maybe not funny, different. She spelled different. it different. Yeah, I'm with you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> but anyway, um, and so... <laughs> I'm so silly tonight. Um, but so I just found out and I, because I have um, poor planning, I think uh, that Amy also has a podcast and, um, but Amy is here to talk about her podcast, but which is also the same reason that we are here. So um, on the, on the line of sustainability, Amy approached me and said, I would love to talk about my, I don't, um, yeah, My project idea challenge. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of um, getting people outside, which yeah. is amazing. And so, Amy, tell us about this. Yeah. So, what I have is what I call the Humans Outside 365 Challenge, and the podcast is also called Humans Outside. You'll see there's a theme. There's a theme. Um, and what happened was, is back in 2016, my family and I moved sight and scene to Alaska because my husband had been serving in the active duty army and he had some injuries from his service, a traumatic brain injury, post traumatic stress. And we were really just starting to understand how those were were impacting us. You know, the tricky thing about both of those injuries is you can't see them. So if you think about like a physical and like a visible physical injury from military mm -hmm. service or anything, it's obvious, right? But when we're talking about your brain, it gets pretty hard. I mean, are you just having a bad day? Are you internally injured? And so we were really just starting to understand what the impact of that was. But I had noticed something, which was when we spent time outside as a family, when we went camping or anything like that near where we lived in Middle Tennessee, where he was stationed, it was like watching somebody take off a backpack and just have this sigh of relief, like this load would fall off as we pitched the tent. And so I was like, you know what, really to help him, we need to spend, like move somewhere where we can spend more time focused on getting outside and just kind of make that a lot easier. And so we picked Alaska because it sounded kind of crazy. Never had been here before. Uh, literally packed up the station wagon. Like I had a literal station wagon that we packed and let the army move some of our stuff and moved up here to Alaska. And that was in 2016. So fast forward, we're in Alaska. It's all great. He's like outdoors having a grand old time. And I felt paralyzed by the move. Um, if you've ever made a big life change, you might have this. Sorry, my dogs are like a little crazy right now. If you've ever made a big life change, you might have this perception of how you think you'll be able to react to that and then be surprised to find that you're not reacting the way you thought you were going to. So that's sort of what happened. I was like, awesome. I'm in Alaska. This is going to be great. And then I was like, woo, Netflix. And I just couldn't get out. I like It was too hard. And then mm. the winter came and it was too hard and I didn't have the right clothing and I didn't know what the right clothing was or and by right I mean like how to stay warm in Alaska I just right. lived in Tennessee right not, I'm from California it's not the same and so it Memorial Day 2017 so about a year after we moved here I was like woo Alaska it's going to be the summertime I'm going to get outside we're going to live in that best life and it was raining Oh. And I was pretty bummed about that. And I remember having this moment, just sitting on my back porch, reading Harry Potter in the rain. I was just being stubborn. Like, I'm going to sit here. So help me God. And realizing that if I didn't change my attitude about what was going on, 
I would never go and do the thing that I had moved all the way up here to do. I would never get around to going outside. And so I decided to give myself a little challenge because that's just who I am as a person. Got to have like a streak or a challenge. Yeah. See what would happen if I went outside every single day. So I tried this like on for size. You know, like when you decide to do something, just like a little, just dip our toe in the water, test a little bit. So I went outside every day, Memorial Day, Labor Day, when it was beautiful outside and warm and we had these great adventures. And But there was one day in there that it was raining because it does that in Alaska. And I very clearly remember going outside, standing there with my coffee mug, getting dripped on like some sort of cartoon character, Mm. and then walking around, turning around after maybe five minutes and going back inside. So at the end of August of that year, as Labor Day approached, I realized I was not done going outside and I wanted to keep my challenge going for a year. And I really wanted to see what would happen if I went outside every day for a year. So I thought, okay, but Amy, we're going to need some rules. We're going to need some rules because here's the deal. Five minutes is not enough time to really be like testing it. You know, I I was going to just, I knew myself that when the winter came and when things got real cold, I was going to say, I've been outside. It's been three minutes. We're done. And that's not what I wanted to do. So I set some guardrails and I came up with some, some, some rules for my challenge. And I set out to do this thing of going outside for at least 20 minutes is the amount of time I decided on every day for a year. It's been, I think, 2,045 days when we're recording this since I started doing that. I did not stop after a year. Spoiler alert. And now one of the things I do as really a passion project is help other people do the same thing. Spend at least 20 consecutive minutes outside every single day. And I do that through my social media. I have a challenge kit if that's something that helps you on my website, humansoutside.com. And I have the Humans Outside podcast. Wow. Wow. (laughs) So now um, we were talking before we started recording and you were saying, oh, so I wanted the 20 minute thing. Like how did you come up with the 20 minute rule? Because you said it's like scientific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So first I needed a rule, right? So I set out to find out what should that be? Because I mean, if it's up for me, I'm going to pick the bare minimum, you know? And I wanted to have, I wanted to accomplish a couple of things with my set amount of time. First of all, I wanted it to be logical. I wanted to have a reason for picking it. And so I read some scientific research and some, you know, data studies that said at the time that 20 minutes was a pretty good amount of time to go start going outside, that you could start seeing results, like measurable results from being outside at that amount of time. And Since then, more studies have actually said that. So there's even more research to support that finding that was that was available in 2017. So it's great. It's always nice to be doing something and then have more people tell you that you're doing the right thing. Awesome. Yeah. I also wanted to pick an amount of time that I would actually do because I would love to look at you and say, I go outside for two hours a day. But who among us has two hours on every day? to go outside, to spend time doing that. You could be outside doing chores. You could be outside doing all sorts of things. Two consecutive hours, that's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I didn't pick an amount of time that I felt I could squeeze into my day, into my busy work life, I would never, ever do this. Um, And so 20 minutes seemed like a logical amount of time. A final thing, and this was sort of like added benefit, I really wanted to pick an amount of time that made it worth it to get dressed to go because in the winter time, you're putting on a lot of layers. I mean, think about it. You may not know where your mittens are. You can't find your hat. You got to find those ice cleats. You got to get the dog ready, all of these things. And then suddenly it's 15 minutes later and you don't have a sock. You know what I mean? So I wanted to pick an amount of time. Someone needs to go pee. Someone has to go pee, right? You got to undress again. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I wanted to pick an amount of time that I felt made it worth the effort to get ready to go outside. And so 20 minutes seemed like a good amount of time for that. You know, I will also say that in retrospect, 20 minutes can actually be a challenging amount of time. And there's Mm -hmm. something to be said for doing something for yourself that's a stretch. There's all sorts of things that you learn by stretching yourself into something uncomfortable. And so there are definitely days in the wintertime that after 10 minutes, like, I'm good. I'm done. 
but I've committed to 20 minutes. And so I do, I spend 20 minutes outside a day and that's a stretch. There are also days that 20 minutes is nowhere near enough time and I'm not done. And guess what? On those days I stay outside. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. I, was, I have so many questions about that. So, um, <clears throat> I mean, one is like you were saying, it's, it's good to stretch yourself, but it's also like you are making that commitment to you. Like that right. is, right. it is a gift. It's, it's for your, mm -hmm. your own good, um, which is amazing. But so my, maybe I don't have a ton of questions, but um, the 20 minutes, mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious. I think it's, I think it's great. Is the 20 minutes about daylight? Because I know in, in Alaska, you don't have 20 minutes in the winter. <clears throat> um, unless you do it at like, what, 11 a.m.? Yeah. So where I live in Alaska, it's light from about, you know, sun's up technically, although it is the light lingers after the sun sets, like, you know, like it's sunset, but it's still light outside like that. Okay. But the sun is up 10 a.m. ish to 3.30 p.m. ish. Um, that is daylight technically. That's better than I thought it was. So it's like five, five and a half, six yeah. hours almost. And, but it really depends. I mean, Alaska, humongous. So it really depends where you are. I'm near Anchorage. So we get more daylight than say five hours north of me in Fairbanks. Gotcha. And so the 20 minutes, is it about daylight? Is it about fresh air? Is it about just getting away from technology? What is I would the... say it's about all of oh. the above and then some. Right. So the thing about every day is it's every day. It's a lot of days. So you have the freedom to do something different tomorrow. And that means that it can be about one thing today and a different thing tomorrow. And you're going to find benefits from both of these things. So I think there is a lot to be said for simply having a habit, having a consistent thing that you do, as we said, challenging yourself, but also just keeping up this wellness habit. Mm -hmm. That is something for you that you do every day for yourself. So that's the first thing. Is there benefit to going outside in daylight? Absolutely. Of course there is. Yeah, we all know that. Even if you haven't read scientific studies on that, you know that in your body, that you right. like the sunshine. Yesterday I was out on a run and I stopped and took a picture because I was like, I am solar powered. So help me God. Like, I feel so good right now in the sun and it's like not even warm outside, but I'm good with that. I got one sleeve rolled up. My arm was getting a little tan on one side of my body. I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have a watch tan on one side and not on the other, you know. Anyway, so... So I am solar powder. There is something to be said for being outside in daylight. However, there's also something to be said for just being in fresh air. So guess what? The darkness accomplishes that too. Right. There's something that there is actually research that shows that your brain uh, has a rest, has a better ability to process passive thoughts while you're walking. So if you, let's say, go for a walk as part of your outdoor time, now you're accomplishing that. It doesn't matter if it's light outside or not. Mm. And so I do all of these things. There are no rules about what you have to do when you're outside. Whatever is there for you or good for you is what you should do. In 2020, we bought a hot tub. Okay. So I had been doing this for several years before we purchased the hot tub. It was like my pandemic purchase. And yeah. <laughs> And it was great. It's great. You know, so I, on cold days, do I sometimes use my hot tub? Heck yes, I do. But not every time it's there. And sometimes I sit out there and do something else, you know? So there every day is, that's the wonderful thing. It's a lot of days. It's all of them. Yeah. So, yeah. You can change it up however you want. That's right. Cool. That's right. Um, and I mean, in the, in the winter, when it's dark a lot, you get to see the, the um, Northern lights. Yes. Yes. We've been very fortunate this year and had a lot of good shows. Now the people who see the Northern lights a lot are out Northern light hunting, or they're staying up very late to accomplish this. And I got to tell you, I don't do that. Yeah. I, I go to sleep at night. Okay. So I don't, you will not find me getting up at 2 AM to go find the Northern lights. It ain't happening, Same. but they have been out in force this last season, and we had some just draw dot jaw dropping Northern Lights shows in the hot tub. I mean, talk about your best life! You're sitting in a hot tub watching the aurora dance across the sky, spectacular. But you know, we also have dark nights, so we can even if the aurora is not out. Hello constellations, hello night sky viewing, mm -hmm. and um, it is 
something that I never really appreciated. And it is a gift of the darkness to be able to see the night sky. And I'll tell you, I love the summer. I love I love it so much because I love the light and I love this like being warm. Like everything that comes along with the summer, it's just good vibes only. But in the summertime, I don't get to see the stars. Right. And so there are gifts to the changing of the seasons. I would say another thing that you learn from being outside every day for a year. And then, you, you know, the more you do this, the more that's true is to understand that seasons do carry good things, each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. And while I might feel and do feel like the summer is my summer boyfriend, I just love it so much. Um, it's like a seasonal fling. Okay. I'm just <laughs> over the moon. And then we, ha then he leaves me every year. Okay. So while I might feel like the summer is my boyfriend and I really wish he would stick around, winter has pro th good things too that I don't get in the summertime. And I do actually look forward to in their own way. The same thing with spring in Alaska, we call spring breakup because the snow is melting and it's kind of gross and all the ice is breaking up. Okay. Has nothing to do with my relationship with my summer boyfriend. Um, <laughs> there are good things about that too. You know, the light has changed where it is in the sky. Uh, the mountains have this light on them in a specific angle that makes them purple and red. It's called Alpine Glow, and oh. it is something you only see in the fall and in the spring as the light is changing and at that specific angle in the sky. And what's really cool about that is how you see that today, how the light is on that mountain right now today is not going to happen again until this day next year. If you happen to have a cloud, non-cloudy day. Right. So every moment that you're outside in doing this habit, you're learning that there are, that things are constantly changing, that that is okay. Talk about a skill that helps you inside and that you have a the ability to take that for what it is and help let that help you and appreciate that it's a gift mm. wow <clears throat> that's beautiful i mean i i think of spring because i mean our weather is a little bit milder than yours i mean it's probably a lot milder than yours but um i think spring spring is one of spring and fall are my favorite seasons but spring is like hope because the snow is melted and even though it's muddy sometimes there's like green grass poking out and right, some right and you see the um the crocus and you know the little sp sprouts of color and then the birds start coming back and we're like on the hunt for the hummingbirds yep. and you know yep. so spring is like you know when you start to see color after months of white absolutely um white and brown but um and then fall is the you know you guys don't have maple leaves you don't have maple trees no, but we we do have birch. We and we have trees that do. They change right. colors, but nowhere just near as spectacular. Yes, the, just the yellow, pretty much. Nowhere near as spectacular as that. But on the mountains, the lichen changes to red and um and and orange. And so the mountains go from being green. Well, in the wintertime, white, right? Right. And then they're green, which again i just love uh they might have green and purple because if depending on how great the wildflowers are you can see them from far away uh and then as the summer wanes it's the lichen starts to turn white and the bushes essentially on the mountains that are making them look green turn to red and darker color you know sort of that autumn colors mm -hmm. and so there is that you know, massive changing. So while it's not like the, you know, the leaves yeah, yeah. and leaf peeping and that sort of thing, it is, it's like mountain peeping. I don't know if that's a thing, but it should be because it's really spectacular. But I will say the other thing is it's kind of a bummer because you're like, oh no, the mountains are changing colors. And they do that before anything else because they're way higher in elevation, right? Right. So it makes sense. And you're like, no, come back, summer boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Just another week just another day exactly whatever yes. i can get yeah Precisely. but you, you guys have that beautiful fireweed though which is yes fireweed so is cool. verifiably my favorite thing yes yeah um uh, i i will say i snuck some home and i planted it even though it's invasive um but uh it didn't do anything dang it i mean <laughs> listen if that's going to be in if that's your invader I'm i know not the worst thing 
I know. I'm like, I, I'm okay. I'll take that. Yeah. But I didn't get it. It was, that was my punishment, I guess, for taking. Yeah. Rude. <laughs> yeah. We'll show you. That's not allowed. Um, so that is, I love that. I mean, so you, you know, very personally what all the seasons are like every day and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and you get to see some really cool stuff, which is not, it's not like, I, I mean, I would say, I want to say that it's like not moving mountains or whatever, but it's also like, it's life changing to spend yes. that time outside, you know, yes, it's tw absolutely. 20 minutes, not a big deal, but at the same time, what like you're saying like what a gift to mm -hmm. have that you know to have that understanding of all of your seasons every day and yeah. you know even in the cold winter yeah um, absolutely yeah well you know I, I think the other thing is that people maybe don't think about is you so yes you're absolutely establishing a relationship of types with the outdoors that you understand seasons and changing and, and that kind of thing but really this is a selfish enterprise okay so you're going outside to help yourself feel better or whatever be connected with nature whatever that means to you right. but additionally what you find and experience outside has a dramatic impact on your life inside and this is something that i was exploring in that initial one year experiment was to see what would happen if i spent time outside every day would i be more creative would i be happier would i feel more productive would i have better ideas all of these things mm -hmm. would i be would my relationships improve and i can tell you without a shadow of doubt the answer to all of those things is yes and the reason is is that when you go outside you are in a space that effectively has all of the things that you need to be fully human because it gives you the bandwidth and the space to experience things in a way that is both in your control and completely out of your control. Me sitting on my deck trying to change the weather to do what I wanted it to do, Memorial Day 2017, is a great example of that. I mean, that lesson taught me that I'm going to have to change. Some things aren't going to change when I want them to. Right. Well, imagine how that can impact your dealings with work or your interpersonal relationships or literally anything inside. Okay. I mean, the impact is just very far reaching. When you go outside, you experience something new every time. We talked about Alpenglow on the mountains. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is incremental introduction of new experiences. Whether you like it or not, they are happening. But many of them are very gentle. It is a gentle on-ramp to being okay with change. Change happens for us as humans and change can be really hard. Mm -hmm. And when you get used to accepting change in small doses, which is what's happening to you outside when you go out there every day, imagine how much better you respond to change in your inside life without even knowing it. Or when you are approached by some big change inside, you can think, you know, like dealt with the weather change the other day. That was fine. And you may not even understand that you're processing this stuff, but your body has experienced this and your, your mind has experienced this mm -hmm. and it is helping you deal with these things inside. I mentioned relationships. When you have experiences outside that are new and you have those experiences with other humans, mm -hmm. you are creating shared experiences of things that are what is the foundation of having a relationship, a shared experience. Mm. And so when you take those shared experiences out oh, that you've had outside into your inside life, they're building blocks to relationships. My husband and I spend a lot of time outside. It has helped us improve our relationship. It's, I mean, it's simple, simple as that. I have met my best friends outside <laughs> through this experiment because we, I, you know, as a part of my experiment, I decided you know, it would help me if I had something I did every week, you know, like a, like a commitment, an appointment of yeah. some types. And so I decided, you know, my small town did a community walk run every Monday night, literally every Monday night. They had never missed one until during COVID. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go to that every week. And so I started to do that and I met people there and those people became my friends. And then we started doing other things outside. And now I have this one person is my best friend and I have run 
I don't even know, hundreds and hundreds of miles with her. Okay, well, each of those runs is a shared experience where we're building that friendship based off of, you know, seeing that crazy thing at the same time or, or whatever, just the sheer amount of time we spend talking because we're both there doing this thing together outside. That is true with every relationship you can encounter. Wow. Do you actually talk while you're running? Oh my gosh. Well, I will tell you, she, <laughs> I, she does most of the talking. I like to bring two, if we're being clear, I like to bring two friends and they talk to each other and I say like witty <sighs> things, like very short sentences, yep. like, uh-huh, or that sounds right. And, and I call it, you know, like my friend podcast. So they had like a live podcast. They are talking, they're talking, and I'm just like interjecting periodically. Yeah. I, I, not really. <laughs> that's so funny I would be just like heaving and yeah having a hard time like just I just need to stay upright yeah well talking I will is, say talking is not happening one uh, so we another commitment I made was to start going to a running club so we have a community running club that meets on uh Tuesday nights in the summer um, as you and I are recording this, our actual our first meeting of the year is tonight. Uh, so I'm very excited. Uh, but it because that means summer soon. Okay. Yay. But um I started I started going to that. And one of the coaches there is his guiding rule is if you're running, you should be able to talk. So I will tell you, like having that be the the um standard is helps me know if I'm going too fast. Cause I can't talk to her. So, <laughs> Oh yeah. So you have yeah. to pace yourself so that you're That's able right. to talk at the same time. That's right. Oh, yeah. I got it. Yeah. So if you're, if you you're go. working too hard, you're, you're going too fast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got yeah. that. Still not yeah. going to do it, but good for you. <laughs> it's, a pretty, it's pretty good logic. I mean, I was picking up when he was laying down. Yeah. I like that. Um, I have a little thing over there. It keeps me thinking that there's a cat, but there's not. Um, I had another question. Um, okay. So tell us about the podcast. I know it's 360 or it's uh, humans outside, but what are you, yeah. how often is your, how often do you drop podcast. episodes? Yeah. And, yeah. 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 So I podcast, I drop new episodes uh, about twice a week. Um, and so one of my episodes is an outdoor diary format where it's just like seven minutes or six or seven minutes of me opining on some outdoor thing that I've recently learned. Um, I know we'll talk about minimalism here coming up and sustainability, but that's actually the theme, uh, at the time of this recording is this week was on that because earth day is right around the corner. Yes. Um, yeah, very, very soon for us, uh, here. And then on Thursdays, I release a recorded episode with a guest. Uh, for a portion of the year, those are reruns of the past, you know, so called best of episodes, but some of my favorites, some that people just really liked, and I'll, I'll replay those. Um, and then the rest of the year, they're original. So I'm coming up on my 300th Humans Outside episode here. That's crazy. That's awesome. Uh, and I have met some really cool people. I will tell you, I have met and interviewed interviewed some very, very interesting people. My background is in journalism. I'm a working journalist uh, in my full time job, and so interviewing people is is something I do Naturally, for a job. Yeah. Um. But I will tell you, one of the best things about being a journalist and also a podcaster is when you're curious about something. You find the person who's an expert on it and you simply talk to them. That's the gig. And so I get to follow my curiosity on this subject of going outside and on talking to people who make the most of going outside by taking really big adventures and talk to people who are researching or experiencing the benefits of going outside professionally and mm. talk to them. And so I'm very excited because I have Gretchen Rubin, who's the author of The How Are You Project. Serious? Yep, on my podcast on April 20th. Um, and she is talking about her new book, Life and Five Senses. And as you might imagine, the five senses are directly related to going outside. But she also has for her audience a project that's very similar to mine, where they are doing 23 and 23, go outside 23 minutes in 2023 um, for her podcast. And uh, she and I have chatted about my project in the past. So she's aware of my 20 minute thing and, and the challenge. And it's all beautiful intersection. So there you go. Oh my gosh. You're a big deal. That's but, so cool. That's that's probably an exaggeration. I am um, journalists are also very pushy, so 
I'm not afraid to ask people to be on my podcast. <laughs> That's awesome though. But Gretchen Rubin is a big deal. So for you to just say, you know, come on my podcast. And she's like, okay, let's talk anyway, you know, podcast or not, let's just hang out or let's chat. That's crazy. Cool. Good for you. Thank you. I mean, you're like, you're starting stuff. Yeah. I was doing 23 minutes, but you were doing it before she was. That's, that is true. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I will say like, nobody owns going outside. Right. And so my goal in my experiment humans outside 365 challenge and in my personal experiment of going outside now every day for 2000 whatever days it is and and i will add that i do actually don't keep careful track of that i happen to know that number because i needed it for something recently so i like looked it up yesterday and i mark big occasions for myself so 2000 days i knew when that was happening i was like let's have a cupcake you know um do a special hike or something right um, but I typically don't keep careful track of it. So if anyone's wondering, I don't like, oh, today is 2000, some blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, um, for the challenge, my goal is really to get people outside. And so I have on my website challenge kits. Some people need a little bit of a push. That's okay. That's human nature. You might be somebody who responds to having accountability or having somebody that you're, who knows you're registered for something, or you want to work towards earning like what Gretchen Rubin would call gold stars. So you want to work towards earning a prize. You want to work towards earning something, or you want to keep track on a tracker, or you just don't know how to get started and having something just literally given to you as a guide with monthly help helps you a lot. That's who the challenge kits are for. If that's you, that's super fine. You are well, you know, you're around a lot of people who are just like that, who just need that stuff. For me, my accountability was I started posting a picture a day on Instagram with the beginning of my challenge. And that's something I still do every single day. I post a picture of my outdoor time. And I will tell you, like, there have been times I've that I have wanted to not do this. And I thought, so help me God, today will not be the day I quit doing this. Right. I'm not starting over. I'm not starting over. But the other thing is, is that there are times that I, that I choose to do something outside. This is going to sound crazy or like maybe to social media E, but I know that I'm going to take a picture of what I'm going to do outside. So I could, every day is a lot of days. I could just sit in on my front porch and read a book. Okay. Or I could take a little bit of extra effort and go for that walk in the woods. And there are days that I choose the walk in the woods, not the sitting on the porch, even though both of them are fine for me. And maybe I'm choosing one or the other because I'm just, I just, you know, lazy or whatever, right? Maybe there's not like a super good, this is what I need reason. I choose the walk in the woods because yesterday I took a picture of me sitting on my porch. So probably should shake that up. Right. So it does provide an, like an internal accountability for myself Mm -hmm. to be able to do that, but that's not necessarily your thing, or you don't want to take a picture a day or whatever. You know, I, the other reason I started to do that, I wanted a way to log all the things I was doing. And I knew that I would never in a million years write it down. Oh, right. I'm going to keep a journal every day. That ain't happening. I'm not going to do that. now you've got pictures. But now I've got a picture. It is my journal. So maybe that's enough for you. Maybe it's not. If it's not and you need help and you want help, that's why I have the challenge kits. If cool. those aren't for you, going outside is free. The podcast is free. You know, we talking about this, totally free, minus the Zoom call. You know, um, <laughs> you can be inside or you can go outside. You don't need anybody's help unless you do need someone's help and there it exists right yay yay (laughs) yay that's cool and I mean really sitting on your porch and reading a book there's also something to be said for downtime like resting there's so many things to be said for that it's awesome I do it all the time right but I know me and I am going I mean I'm a human and I'm going to take the path of least resistance I also know myself that I am a pretty boring human. It, given the option, I do the same thing every single day. I literally Same-sies. eat the same thing for breakfast every morning, okay? So I know that if I don't hold myself accountable for trying new things once in a while, it ain't happening. And let's be honest, I could sit in my hot tub for 20 minutes every day and check that box. But am I really accomplishing the thing that I set out to do for myself, which was to see how going outside would help me? If I do the same thing every single day, 
for me, the answer is no. Maybe that's the answer is yes for you. That's fine. That's awesome. You know yourself, you know what you're trying to do. But I know that I'm going to have a more varied benefit from this by sometimes going on a walk in the woods, sometimes sitting on my front porch instead of my back porch, sometimes being mildly uncomfortable and not just soaking in the hot water of my hot tub. You know, the other thing I'll say is not everyone has a hot tub. Okay. It's a huge privilege that I do want have one. Uh, and I don't take that for granted at all. You don't need a hot tub to do an outdoor challenge. I did what three years without one, right? Um, in Alaska, it can be done. Is it a wonderful privilege to have? Sure. You know, but there are so many ways to go outside and outside. Also, you don't need to be in Alaska or even somewhere with like a lot of trees or whatever. Right. Outside is outside. It is literally anywhere that you have opened a door and stepped outside. Now you're outside. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you can do it wherever you are. Literally. Mm-hmm. Yep. I have done my outdoor time, guys, on the drop-off area of the Seattle airport more than once. Multiple, like at least 10 times now I have done this. Because if I fly somewhere from Alaska, it is a very long day. I'm probably leaving at like five in the morning from my house. Am I doing my outdoor time before I go? Probably not. So during right. my layover, I go outside in the at the Seattle airport. Yeah. Do you have to like go through security and stuff? Yep. Yep. Oh. So I just make sure that I've timed my life correctly. Yeah. And I pre-check. <laughs> yeah. And that. And that. Ah, clever. Yeah. I'm always so afraid to leave and then get stuck in security on the way back in or something. Yeah. But. I will say I do not do this when I have tight connection. We're talking several hours. Yeah, I can gotcha. afford 20 minutes to go outside and then come back in. What's sure. the worst that happens? I'm in security a little bit, like ex- the rest of my time. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, my goodness. Um, and so you said this week's theme is minimalism. Yep. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And have you, do you have your interview on Thursday? Is that? Yeah. So um, last week on April, whatever that was, <laughs> let's try, let's I'll look it up really fast in case people are listening to this, not on at, in this time period on April 13th, 2023, I re-ran an episode with Meg Carney. She has a book and a podcast also called Outdoor Minimalist. Um, I interviewed her last year and she, I re-ran the episode with her. And then on this week's Outdoor Diary, which aired on April 18th, uh, so at the time of our recording, Today. I talk about my own minimalismness, and what I talk about there, and you know what I'll tell you is, I did not consider myself an environmentalist or conservationist per se, except that I thought it would be a pretty good idea if everyone else got to experience what I was experiencing. It was not for the sake of some sort of greater Earth good, right? I grew up in a reduce, reuse, recycle era. I'm from a beach in California. You better believe this was discussed. And I mean a lot. Okay. (laughs) However, one of the things I have noticed through my outdoor time is the more time you spend outside, the more you feel like your connection to outdoors is a relationship. And isn't it nice if you take care of the thing that you like? And so when I talk about or think about for myself, minimalism and sustainability, I'm thinking about it from the perspective of, boy, howdy, I sure like nature. Let's make sure that it sticks around. So for me, that looks like making choices about what kind, I mean, really sort of things that you wouldn't necessarily think about. I heavily lean on the reuse part of the reduce, reuse, recycle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that looks like making sure that I buy used. If I need new gear, I buy used when I can. I also try not to buy new gear and and not used and not new just at all <laughs> like keep using the thing that you have we right. live in a consumer society it is very easy to hop into the nearest outdoor retailer and buy the next new shiny thing it's lighter it's cooler it's a better color look how shiny look how clean or you can repair the thing you already have many big retailers uh patagonia north face mountain hardware outdoor research, just name a few, have warranties for the things that you buy. 
And so if you are a person who owns something from those brands, I personally really like mountain hardware jackets. They fit my body really well. Okay. (laughs) So I like that brand. If that has a hole in it or breaks, they will repair it and send it back to me if that is a possibility. And so I think a lot of people don't know about those warranties and you can lean on those to be reducing and reusing and recycling to keep using the thing you already have. Beautiful benefit on the side is that it really saves your pocketbook too, because outdoor gear is expensive. But when we're talking about sustainability, we're talking about individual personal choices. And that is one of the ways that I do that. Cool. That's perfect. I mean, you just answered my question. That's sweet. Um, I I was thinking as you were talking about, um, and I have to say minimalist, what did you say? Minimalism. Minimalism-ness. You said minimalism-ness. And I was like, if it wasn't a hard word before. <laughs> yeah, I know. In my Listen. head, I'm like, how? How many syllables? <laughs> when I recorded her in the introduction to that podcast with her outdoor minimalist minimalism, I had to like redo it several times. So you are not alone. It is a mm, tongue. Um, it's like a lip twister. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. But um, so what I was thinking when you were talking about um, your thoughts on sustainability and being outside and how it changes your relationship to inside. I was thinking, you know, the more time you spend outside, I would think that, and I, I do at least a half hour outside every day, but um, just walking the dog. Um, That counts. But yeah. Um, But I would think the more time you spend outside, the more almost claustrophobic, if you have a lot of stuff inside, it Mm. would feel inside because you have all this space outside and then to come inside Mm. and everything is so closed up. And I, I don't really feel that, but it would make sense that you would feel that. And I wish I felt that more. Like I'm work, I'm working on, I'm working on weeding out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's an interesting, interesting idea. I have not personally experienced that probably a lot because I already don't have very much stuff. It is, it's sparse to start with. Um, Part of that I think is a side effect of moving with the military. So often you just don't have a lot of stuff. You tend to sort of get rid of it because it's really nice to not unpack it. So I don't have a lot of extra stuff and I tend to get twitchy after a year or two and just clean everything out. And that's also sort of a military side effect. A lot of people do that. So, oh. but that would be very interesting if, if people did experience that. And, and, and I think you're right, not at all surprising because again, like you just said, the more time you spend in an expansive space, the more you want to replicate that, that feels good, right? When mm-hmm. you're doing something that feels good, you want to do it more. Right. Um, and so why wouldn't you want to bring that inside a little bit. Although I, you would think it also would mean that you have a lot of houseplants and I definitely don't. So I just think I would kill them. I did buy an emotional support plant a couple of weeks ago. I had a hard day. <laughs> an emotional support plant. What was your emotional support plan? Um, it is this little, I don't, you're going to laugh at me. I don't even know what kind of plant it is. I walked into the store and I saw a pot that I really liked. Okay. And I said, <laughs> to myself like what could I put in this pot and the answer really was only a plant because it is like this weird little sized plot and so I ended up walking out of there spending way more money than I had wanted to it's a small business it's fine I guess uh and having an emotional support plant that now sits on my on my desk it's pretty it's got purple flowers I have no idea what it is none so (laughs) but so did you buy the plant for the pot yeah (laughs) I love it definitely yeah, in fact, the lady was like, so, you know, the pot is is a pot, it's empty, and then the plant is in its little plant container. And I was like, so do I, like, do I buy, like, potting soil? Like, what do I do? And she, like, well, yeah, you buy indoor potting soil, put it in there. And she looked at me, she's like, or we have a repotting service. And I was like, Hello? yes, that's the one. That's the answer. Please take it away. Like, just take my money, you know? But yeah, that's stop that's offering those other options. Why would I do that? Yeah. 
why would I, yeah, please just take my money and pot this plant and send me on my way. So this is how it snowballed into the major expense that I didn't expect, but that's my own fault, you know? And also I did not eat an entire pint of ice cream, which was my other option. So (laughs) (laughs) that definitely didn't happen. <clears throat> but um, I mean, I would think I, so for me, if I were to have someone else pot it, it would mean that if something went wrong, it's not on me. Yeah. Fair enough. Even though I tend to overwater. Um, I so am that's... staring. I tend to not water. And so I am staring at it all day, every day. So it's been very well cared for so far. <laughs> Are you too dry? Are you okay? Do you need water? Yeah. Also calling it my emotional support plant makes me feel like I have to take care of it. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. And it's purple, purple flowers. I wonder if it's a little violet. I have no idea, no idea at all. None. Awesome. (laughs) We need to do stuff like that sometimes. Sometimes you just need to. Yep. Cool. All right. So this is, this is so much fun. I love, I love podcasting because I get to also meet super cool people. Um, But so you are a journalist during the day or during the week or whatever, Mm -hmm. and then you do a podcast twice a week. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. How long is your interview one? Oh, it's about 45 minutes, 35 to 45 minutes. Wow. Good for you. That's awesome. And you have two kids and a husband. And how how many dogs? Two dogs. But only one husband, so... (laughs) That's amazing that you have the time to do that. Well, Mm -hmm. I am a firm believer and I, you know, this goes back to the 20 minute thing, right? That you have time for what you want to have time for. And there are, I mean, there are absolutely constraints on that, right? I mean, I want to have time to watch a bunch of TV on Netflix too, in addition to all this other stuff, because I really enjoy a good, good rerun of some long running TV show. Pretty great, but that's not my priority. So I have time for the things that are my priority Um, and one of them is podcasting and the other one is going outside and not in that order. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no real order. <clears throat> That's cool. I mean, I'm doing this because my husband is away. <laughs> like I'm, I podcast weekly, but I'm, I'm like trying to get extra episodes in because I can, because there's yeah. no one here to stop me um, yeah. or make me feel guilty. Fair but. enough. But he is an outside person. I am less of an outside person, but I certainly respect that. Um, but I think, Amy, that that is, that's such a cool, it's such a cool challenge. It's not out of anyone's range. Like 20 minutes is not, it's not going to make or break anything. Most of us have 20 minutes a day. Yeah. We can make it if, you know, if we need to, I mean, we take lunch breaks or. Well, I mean, and behold the amount of time I spend doom scrolling on social media, even while also going like independent of having time to go outside. So, you know, part of me, sometimes I think maybe I should make it 40 minutes a day for myself. And then I remember January and I don't do that. So, you know, because there are definitely days in January that I'm like, this 20 minutes is enough, please. And thank you. It's cold out here and I don't want to be out here anymore. But they're all it's always worth it you know and so I do find that I have the time because I choose to have the time for that Mm. and I can collect 20 minutes from other parts of my day I can you know I can linger less over Facebook I can decide to um, watch slightly less TV I mean like there are a lot of hours in the day and we don't use them all productively and that's okay we shouldn't right you should have time that's not productive Right. But you can siphon some of that non-productive time into going outside. You can. It is possible. For sure. Okay. And I think it's it's a it's a good um I mean I think it's a good challenge to maybe offer up to people to you know, maybe you don't have to commit to 365 days a year, but no, absolutely you not. know, you also yeah. could, but you know, just get outside more. And mm-hmm. I think that I think that what you were saying about, um, you know, you, you like this challenge, you like being out there 20 minutes plus you enjoy nature. Let's keep it, let's keep it that way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, let's, let's take yeah. care of it. Um, yeah. I think that's, that's a super great reason to, 
um, to keep that challenge going. I think mm -hmm. it's a great, I think it's a great idea to um, put that challenge out. And I love that you made a podcast about it too. So someone could maybe put some earbuds in and listen to yep. a podcast about being outside while they're outside walking. Mm -hmm. yep. Maybe, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> but uh, I love I love that idea. I love that you're, it was just so intentional. Like I have to walk the dog. That's why we have a dog. So I will walk, but yeah, no, you know. but that's great. You know, you've, what you've created is um, you've created an accountability system for yourself, whether you call it that or not. For sure. And that's awesome. You know, um, one of the things Gretchen Rubin talks about in her new podcast or in her new book rather is that um, this idea of recess and that she wants to do things that feel like recess, not like a chore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really valuable concept because you could look at walking the dog as a chore and maybe you do some days, maybe it feels like the chore. And I would say that going outside for me on like some days, I do catch myself feeling like it's a chore, but what I want to feel like is that it's recess. And so that means taking a moment and reframing and catching myself feeling that way and thinking, okay, what about this today that I am I dreading and how can I make it feel better? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's simply an attitude switch, but other times it's changing what I'm doing. You know, maybe if it feels like a chore to go for a walk, I do go sit in the porch or I do go sit on my hot tub, right. you know? Um, maybe if it feels like a chore, I find something that delights me. You know, like maybe I don't want to go on a walk in my woods again. And I've got this like beautiful wooded path behind my house that belongs to the high school. Okay. So I live next to a high school. I have the woods behind my house that belong to them, but it's very snowy back there um, in the winter, you know, in the part time of the year can be like really hard to walk. Like, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to walk in my neighborhood. Well, guess what? I can get in my car and drive two miles down the road and go walk somewhere else. You know, I can do that. And driving somewhere to to be outside and when outside is outside your door, that sounds a little crazy. But every day is a lot of days. You can do something different today. It's going to be fine. Right. You know, maybe I would feel better if I was walking and I also had some coffee. We can do that, you know. And so there are lots of, you know, maybe if I was listening to a podcast, it would distract me. I would feel a little bit better about this thing that just feels like an irritation. Mm. The, all of those things are fine. Um, and so it's really up to you what you do with your time and what you do with your outdoor time. The important thing is that you're being intentional, that you're getting outside, uh, and that you're doing it consistently. Cool. Oh my gosh. That's so, that's so awesome, Amy. Oh my gosh. I love, I just love the intentionality about it. I do. I, you know, I, like I said, I, I walk the dog every day, but that's, you know, that's my accountability, but, yeah. um, I, you, do you walk your dogs or do you just have a yard and they just, they're probably well behaved? <laughs> so I have an extraordinarily old dog. Well, not extraordinarily old enough. She's an old enough dog and she has trouble with her hips in the wintertime in the deep snow. Um, and then I have a little dog. So when the snow isn't super deep and there aren't a couple of moose, which we also have a problem with right now, mm. um, in the backwoods, I do walk them back there. They'll come, they'll come with us, but we've actually really had to, um, put the kibosh on that this winter because the snow is very, very deep back there. We had a big windstorm. So in addition to having a lot of snow, we had a lot of snow below on top of that. So it's just like, it is so deep. I think it's going to melt in like August, but people tell me that's not true. Oh um, but gosh. I'm convinced next January, that's when it melts anyway. Um, and then we also have a couple of moose that have taken up resident back there this winter time. And that makes walking the dogs back there extra hard because for sure. They don't really get along. So <laughs> Dog. because dogs, <laughs> because dogs, but I, ha you know, yes. And, in, in sometimes this winter when we couldn't really go back there because moose and snow, we did, we walked them in the neighborhood, but it is not something that I do that I right. do daily, no. but every day is yeah. a lot of days. You, there's lots of time. So yeah. That's awesome. Um, and do you, do you usually, well, no, I mean, and so you're, you're teaching your, your kids are doing this as well. You're yeah, so encouraging my children, them to do that. Yeah. My kids do not come out with me every day. Um, often my personal outdoor time will be mid-afternoon while they're still at school. 
because of, you know, I worked this job and I got to get outside for a minute, just clear my mind, whatever. Right. So that's often the case. Um, but I do, you know, we do have an outdoor lifestyle as a family. Getting outside is a core part of who we are and it's how we spend our recreational time. We, for my kids' birthdays, we do something outside with them. Um, and their birthdays are in March and April. So it's not like that's an overly pleasant or easy access um, task. True story. You know, uh, it's April is a terrible time to have a birthday where you want to spend out time outside because all the ski areas are already closed, but the weather's not good enough really to do anything else. I mean, it's a challenge, but we do spend time outside uh, for as a family on birthdays. We use a public use cabin on Thanksgiving and around Christmas. So we have an, you know, we're not outside when we're in the cabin, but we are off grid <laughs> and we're doing outside stuff while we're there. Um, and we spend Thanksgiving day at a public use cabin. Nice. Um yeah, so it's really just become a kind of a core part of our family's story. And um, I hope that that is something that they carry into the rest of their lives. Well, they've got, I mean, like you were saying, if if you if it's a chore for you, then it may not stick. But if you make it fun right. and you find, you know, enjoyable things about that, then it should stick. But Anyway, I don't want to take up more of your time. It is running night. It's the first night of running group. Um, but thank you so much. And then, so I know you gave you gave the way to, for people to find you earlier, but can you just say that again? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me at Humans Outside on Facebook and Instagram, humansoutside.com, and Humans Outside Podcast, wherever it is you like to get your podcasts in all of the podcast places. And I've got you on good pods. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Very cool, Amy. Thank you so much for your time today. Have a great first running night. Thank and you. um I will be I'll be good potting you and awesome. telling you about your podcast and how great it is. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yay. All right. <laughs>